All right, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of my living room tilapia aquaponics setup. I just want to note that the last time I was here was a month ago. Um, almost to the day a month ago, I haven't been here. I haven't touched anything. Um, it's completely automated. Um, first, let's go over the feeding. So for the feed right here, we've got one of these drum style automatic feeders and it goes into here and goes down into the fish tank. Um, I got this on eBay, so here's what the box looks like if you want to get one for yourself. And then the other thing that I have automated is this grow light. So I put the grow light on a timer so it only has so many hours a day because it was getting too many leaves up here and it was getting uh, too blocked in and it was starting to be a fire hazard. So I do have people come in and check on it. There's my water temperature. But the other thing I want to show you that I'm kind of proud of is I put this float in, you know, like one of the cooler floats and it comes out right here. And it was that I had to have somebody come and fill these up and refill the aquarium because the plants will suck the water out. So anybody that's done aquaponics has found that the water will just keep going down and down and down and down and your pump will cavitate and it's not good. Um, and so I did have somebody filling these and coming in once a week and refilling it. But then I came up with another solution which was I have this 55 gallon water drum and it's next to the bathroom and so what I do is I hook this hose hose clamp it over there and I fill the drum up I just filled the drum up I've been gone a month and it was one month that it went through the entire amount <coughs> I did have to epoxy this let's see if I can get some light on this for you I did have to epoxy this because it was dripping a little bit, but I put this here to make sure it had quit dripping and it did quit because all the paper towels are still, or the toilet paper is still elevated. It would be flat in the bottom and it would be damp if it was still dripping. But if you've seen my um, if you've seen my uh, chicken coop video on water, um, same concept applies. I could have run this over to the sink and hooked it onto a 35 PSI constant flow, but I haven't been here a month. If that pipe bursts, it would, it would be a long time before anybody discovered the flood. With this, I've got 55 gallons and I've got it only under a couple PSI, whatever the PSI for the atmospheric pressure is for that. That's how much PSI this is under. So worst case, this someone comes in here and breaks my line or whatever, only 55 gallons are gonna end up on the floor. Sounds like a lot, but it's gonna evaporate before any permanent damage is done. But if it's hooked up to the water line, it's gonna go and go and go until somebody finds it. And by then, lots of damage. So that's why I, I'm a big fan of using, um, you know, a 55 gallon drum for your reservoir, whether it be for your chicken coop or for your aquaponics. And then you just have to refill it once a month rather than um, hooking it up to a permanent line. Um, we've got these guys. We started them as fingerlings. You can see like that's four inch pipe right there. So that's how big you can tell how in relation. This is a 55 gallon tank. Um, there's 20 of them in there. It's about time to move some out. I also went and got two uh, Cotamus. They're running around. I can see them there in the bottom. Um, I got two Pocotamus. It took them a while to figure out that the Pocotamus aren't food. Um, another tip is this ABS plastic. You have to put a rock inside or else it wants to float. But that was nice for when they were still fingerling, so they'd go in and hide. The Pocotamus can go in there and hide right now too. Um, I think my other tanks, I'm gonna do that as well. 
Um, also, I added an extra aerator um, because there was a week when someone did not come in and, they, and, it, and the water line got below my pump. So the water had evaporated when the person was supposed to be helping me out and filling these. They didn't get to it in time. And the pump cavitated and the pump froze up and actually broke. Um, but because I still had the uh, an air pump putting bubbles in, the fish didn't die. I mean, the water was in dire straits when, when we did find it. But this nice clear water, this is a month old. I haven't touched the system for a month. And look how good it is. And then we're just... Um, We've got two outlets, and then we've got th three drains. So we're making sure that we drain faster than it's put in, and it can keep up or else it'll overflow. And what I've done is I've cut these bottles as kind of like little bubble shields because it was going in and splashing little droplets, and the floor would always be wet. Um, so since I put these in, it keeps all the splash splashing to a minimum. Um, these are tomato plants. Haven't had a, they haven't really been pollinated by anything, so that's what, you know, I keep getting some flowers, but, but yeah. So there you have it. This is my indoor automated aquaponic system that I haven't touched in a month.